LaserWriter 2 has four major systems. This program points out the major parts included in each system and each part's function. Knowing where each part is located and what each part does will help you more quickly and accurately troubleshoot and take apart the LaserWriter 2. The four systems which make up the LaserWriter 2 are the power distribution system, control system, image formation system, and the pickup feed system. As you look at each system, a part's general orientation will be indicated as either at the front, right, back, left, top, or bottom side of the printer. To save time, some screws and parts have been removed before a part is identified. Let's begin with the power distribution system. The power distribution system has five major parts. First, the power supply block. The power supply block is located at the rear of the printer. In the power supply block are the main power switch, circuit breaker, AC driver PCA, and fuser assembly heater safety PCA. There are two fans. The upper fan is located above the power supply block and is the exhaust fan for the space above the chassis. The lower fan is located under the power supply block with the controller boards. This is the exhaust fan for the space inside the base cover. Here is the DC power supply. It supplies power to the main motor and the DC controller PCA. This is the high voltage power supply, the last major part of the power distribution system. Located at the front of the printer, the high voltage power supply provides high voltage DC power to the primary corona and the transfer corona. These are the major parts of the power distribution system. Next, we'll locate the control system and its five major parts. The I.O. PCA is located at the bottom of the printer. It controls communications between the printer and external computers and generates the user test print. The LaserWriter 2 I.O. PCA contains the PostScript ROMs which convert PostScript commands sent from the computer into a bit image, which is then sent to the DC controller PCA. There are three types of I.O. PCAs. The LaserWriter 2 SC, LaserWriter 2 NT, and LaserWriter 2 NTX. The DC controller PCA is located above the I.O. PCA on the bottom of the printer. The DC controller PCA is the LaserWriter 2's command center. It controls and monitors the other three systems of the printer, power distribution, image formation, and pickup feed systems. When the upper unit is opened, the interlock switch cuts off power to the printer. Here is the interlock switch and interlock switch lever. Next to the DC power supply and main motor assembly on the distribution PCA, are the toner cartridge sensitivity switches, SW301 and SW302. 
These switches help the DC controller match laser beam intensity to drum sensitivity. The last major part of the control system is the status display. The green lamp indicates the printer is ready or in use. The orange lamp indicates low toner level. The first red lamp indicates paper out. And the second red lamp indicates a paper jam. These are the major parts of the control system. Please stop the tape now and complete the practice exercises in your Laser Writer 2 Parts and Their Functions workbook. <laughs> There are 16 major parts in the image formation system. Most of the parts are included in the laser scanner assembly and the toner cartridge. First, let's look at the laser scanner assembly. This assembly generates the laser beam that is reflected off the rotating hexagonal mirror onto the photosensitive drum. The laser and scanner assembly includes four parts. This is the fiber optic cable. It carries the laser light signal reflected from the beam detect mirror to the DC controller PCA to indicate that the beam is about to start a new scan. The laser beam blocking shutter is located inside the laser scanner assembly. This shutter closes when the upper unit is open protecting your eyes from the invisible infrared laser beam. Also located inside the laser and scanner assembly is a hexagonal mirror. This mirror produces the horizontal laser scans. This is the laser diode, the last major part of the laser and scanner assembly. It generates a stationary laser beam. The toner cartridge contains six parts. First, the photosensitive drum. The image to be printed is formed on this drum and transferred to paper. Next, the primary corona. It applies a uniform layer of negative charge over the photosensitive drum. This is light blocking shutter number one. It allows the preconditioning exposure lamp access to the photosensitive drum. Here is light blocking shutter number two. This shutter allows the laser beam access to the photosensitive drum. This is the toner bin where the toner is stored. Also inside the toner cartridge is the developing cylinder, the last major part of the toner cartridge. The developing cylinder applies toner from the toner bin to the photosensitive drum. There are five additional parts included in the image formation system. Located on the upper unit, directly above the toner cartridge, is the preconditioning exposure lamp. It erases residual charges from the photosensitive drum. Here is the mirror assembly. This mirror reflects the laser beam from the laser scanner assembly onto the photosensitive drum. These are the power inputs for the primary corona. When the upper unit is closed, the power inputs on the toner cartridge make contact with the leads on the high voltage power supply. This is the transfer corona. The transfer corona wire puts a high positive charge on the paper causing the toner to transfer from the photosensitive drum to the paper. These are the major parts of the image formation system. Please stop the tape now and complete the practice exercises in your Laser Writer 2 Parts and Functions workbook. <laughs> The pickup feed system includes the distribution PCA, the transfer guide assembly, the fuser assembly, and various mechanical parts. 
First, we'll look at the mechanical parts in the sequence they normally function. This is the main motor, the source of all mechanical drive in the printer. Next, the paper cassette pickup roller. Here is the paper cassette pickup roller. This roller moves sheets of paper from the paper cassette into the paper path. This is the separation pad. It helps separate the sheets of paper as the pickup roller feeds the paper forward. Here is the registration roller. This roller guides the paper, allowing it to be aligned before the print process begins. This is the transfer guide assembly. This assembly guides the paper and holds it aligned as it comes into contact with the photosensitive drum. Here is the static eliminator. It removes the charge put on the paper by the transfer corona. Here is the fuser assembly. The fuser pressure rollers provide the pressure needed to fuse the toner onto the paper. The fuser safety PCA controls the level of heat generated by the fuser heater bulb. This is the fuser bulb. Located in the top fuser roller, the fuser bulb provides the heat to melt the toner into the paper. This is the distribution PCA, located at the rear of the printer. Two solenoids and two sensors are located on the distribution PCA. Pickup roller solenoid SL301. It causes the clutch to engage and turn the paper pickup roller. Paper out sensor PS301. It senses the presence of paper in the cassette. Manual feed sensor PS302. It senses the presence of paper, which is manually fed into the printer using the same arm as the paper out sensor. And registration roller clutch solenoid SL302. It causes the registration rollers to rotate and paper to be fed toward the photosensitive drum. Finally, paper delivery sensor PS331 located on the fuser assembly PCA, the last major part of the pickup feed system. It senses the delivery of paper. If the paper fails to reach and clear this sensor within the necessary time, a paper jam is determined to have occurred. <laughs> These are the major parts of the pickup feed system, the last of the four Laser Rider 2 systems. Please stop the tape now and complete the practice exercises in your Laser Rider 2 Parts and Functions workbook. The Laser Rider 2 has four major systems. Each system has several parts and assemblies you'll have to take apart and reassemble. This program demonstrates how to take apart and reassemble each of these parts. In this program, you'll see how to take apart the upper and lower units, reassemble the upper and lower units, and take apart and reassemble the base unit, including final assembly and test. To save time, some screws and parts will already have been removed before a procedure is demonstrated. Be sure your workstation has an ESD mat and that you wear a wrist strap whenever you handle any PCA. And here's another important reminder. Preserve proper grounding and continuity by replacing silver screws with silver screws and black screws with black screws. Be sure to read the general information section of the Laser Writer 2 technical procedures before you begin take apart. Let's begin by taking apart the upper and lower units. Step 1. Remove the paper cassette and toner cartridge. 
the paper cassette is removed by lifting up on the tray and gently pulling it toward you. Remove the toner cartridge by first opening the laser writer too. Then firmly hold the toner cartridge and lift it straight up. Step 2. Remove the laser writer I.O. PCA. First, loosen the two Phillips screws securing the PCA to the chassis. Then carefully slide the PCA out of the printer. Be sure to observe ESD precautions and handle the board by the metal bracket and the edge of the board only. Lay the board on the ESD mat or place it in an ESD bag. Step 3. Remove the cover set. Begin by removing the four exterior Phillips screws that secure the cover set to the printer and open the top cover of the printer. Now remove the five interior screws. With all the screws removed, lift the cover set straight up until the status panel is visible. Now disconnect the cable from the status panel. Finally, lay the cover set aside, out of the way, on the workstation. Step 4. Remove the upper fan. Start by removing the two Phillips screws that secure the filter case. Now lift straight up on the filter case and fan duct and lay it aside. Handle the filter carefully. It's very brittle and breaks easily. Next, remove the three Phillips screws that secure the fan to the power supply block. Finally, disconnect the fan cable from the fuser safety PCA and remove the fan. Step 5. Remove the fuser assembly. Begin removing the fuser assembly by removing the four Phillips screws that secure the fuser assembly to the chassis. Then lift the fuser assembly straight up and remove it from the printer. Step 6. Remove the power supply block. First, remove the four Phillips screws that secure the power supply block to the chassis. Then lift the power supply block straight up and remove it from the printer. Step 7. Remove the laser and scanner assembly. Begin by disconnecting the laser diode cable from the laser diode PCA connector. Open the scanning motor PCA cover and disconnect the scanning motor cable from the scanning motor PCA connector. Now remove the Phillips screw on the optical fiber cover and open the cover. Carefully slide the optical fiber straight up and out of the laser and scanner assembly. Finally, remove the four Phillips screws securing the laser and scanner assembly to the cassette holder. Lift the assembly up and lay it aside. Step 8. Remove the DC power supply. First, remove the six Phillips screws that secure the right support plate to the chassis. Detach the cables. Lift the plate up and lay it on the work surface next to the printer. Next, disconnect the main motor cable from the DC power supply connector J3. Remove the three Phillips screws that secure the DC power supply to the chassis. Remove the optical fiber from its holder on the distribution PCA cover. Finally, lift the DC power supply straight up and remove it from the printer.
remember to remove the distribution PCA from the DC power supply when returning the power supply to Apple. Step 9. Remove the main motor assembly. Begin disassembly by removing the five Phillips screws that secure the main motor assembly to the chassis. Then lift the main motor assembly straight up and remove it from the printer. Step 10. Remove the high voltage power supply. First, remove the four Phillips screws that secure the high voltage power supply assembly to the cassette holder. Finally, lift the high voltage power supply straight up and remove it from the printer. Step 11. Remove the heater bulb. Start removing the heater bulb by loosening the Phillips screw that secures the fuser cover to the fuser assembly. Then remove the fuser cover. Now remove the fuser cleaning felt. Using the screwdriver or grip ring pliers, remove the E-ring that secures the drive release cam to the fuser assembly. Then remove the drive release cam and the spring. Remove the Phillips screw that secures the left contact cap to the fuser assembly. Then remove the cap. Remove the two Phillips screws that secure the fuser PCA to the fuser assembly. Then remove the fuser PCA. Be careful. The fuser PCA will still be attached to the fuser assembly after removal. Now remove the three Phillips screws that secure the left terminal mount to the fuser assembly. Then remove the terminal mount. Remove the Phillips screw that secures the left heater support to the fuser assembly. Then remove the support. Remove the Phillips screw that secures the right contact cap to the fuser assembly. Then remove the cap. Next, remove the three Phillips screws that secure the right terminal mount to the fuser assembly. Then remove the terminal mount. Now remove the Phillips screw that secures the right heater support to the fuser assembly and remove. And finally, remove the heater bulb. Be careful not to break the bulb as you remove it. This concludes the upper and lower units take apart. Please stop the tape now and complete the practice exercises in your Laser Rider 2 take apart module. Step 12. We'll begin assembly by replacing the heater bulb. First, place the heater bulb in position by sliding the bulb into the fuser assembly from the end where the drive release cam is. Next, place the right heater support in position and replace the Phillips screw.
place the right terminal mount in position and replace the three Phillips screws. Then place the right contact cap in position and replace the Phillips screw. Now place the left heater support in position and replace the Phillips screw. Place the left terminal mount in position and replace the three Phillips screws. Next, place the Fuser PCA in position and replace the two Phillips screws. Place the left contact cover in position and replace the Phillips screw. Now replace the drive release cam and spring. The spring often drops out when you remove the release cam. Replace the drive release cam E-ring. And finally, place the fuser cover in position and tighten the Phillips screws. Step 13. Replace the high voltage power supply. Begin by placing the high voltage power supply in position. Be sure to align it with the positioning and connector pins. Next, Replace the Phillips screws securing the power supply to the chassis. Step 14. Replace the main motor assembly. Begin by placing the main motor assembly in position. Next, replace the five main motor assembly screws. Step 15. Replace the DC power supply. Make sure to align the positioning pins and the connector pins. Start by placing the DC power supply in position. Next, replace the three DC power supply screws. Place the optical fiber in its holder. Next, Connect the main motor cable to the DC power supply connector J3. And finally, place the right support plate in position and replace the six Phillips screws and the cables. Step 16. Replace the scanner assembly.
begin replacing the scanner assembly by positioning it and replacing the four screws. Next, replace the optical cable and screw. Replace the scanning motor cable and close the cover. Finally, reconnect the laser diode. Step 17. Replace the power supply block. First, align the connector pins and place the power supply block in position. Then, replace the four Phillips screws. Step 18. Replace the fuser assembly. Begin by placing the fuser assembly in position. Align the connectors at each end of the fuser with the mating connectors in the printer. Finally, replace the four fuser assembly screws. And finally, step 19. Replace the upper fan. Begin by placing the fan in position on the power supply block. Then replace the three Phillips screws. Connect the fan cable to the Fuser Safety PCA Connector J152. And finally, place the filter case and fan duct in position and replace the two Phillips screws. The Laser Writer 2 IO PCA paper cassette, toner cartridge, and cover set will be replaced as part of base unit take apart and final assembly. This concludes upper and lower units reassembly. Please stop the tape now and complete the practice exercises in your Laser Writer 2 take apart module. <laughs> We'll begin base unit take apart by removing the bottom panel and lower cover. Step 20. Remove the bottom panel by first carefully turning the printer over. Next, remove the seven Phillips screws that secure the bottom panel to the lower cover. Then lift the panel off. Remove the lower cover by first removing the two Phillips screws that secure the shield plate to the lower cover. Then remove the shield. Remove the nine Phillips screws that secure the lower cover to the chassis of the printer. Pull the right side of the lower cover away from the chassis and slide the cover to the left to clear the I.O. PCA guide rails. Step 21. Remove and replace the DC controller PCA. Begin removing the DC controller PCA by disconnecting these cables. Fuser PCA cable, lower fan cable, power supply block cable, high voltage power supply cable, optical fiber cable, scanning motor PCA cable, laser diode PCA cable, then remove the interlock switch. Now locate the I.O. PCA guide rail closest to the DC controller PCA. Remove the two Phillips screws that secure the guide rail to the chassis. Then move the guide rail away from the DC controller PCA. Remove the four Phillips screws that secure the DC controller PCA to the chassis. Remove the two Phillips screws that secure the power lugs to the connector PCA. 
remove the two Phillips screws that secure the two DC power supply connectors in place. And finally, lift the DC controller PCA slightly and pull it away from the connector PCA. Now we'll replace the DC controller PCA. First, place the DC controller PCA in position and replace the four screws. Replace the two DC power supply connector screws. Next, replace the two power lug screws. Place the I.O. PCA guide rail in position and replace the two screws. Place the cover interlock switch in position and replace the screw. And finally, reconnect the following cables. Fuser PCA cable, lower fan cable, power supply block cable, high voltage power supply cable, optical fiber cable, scanning motor PCA cable, laser diode PCA cable, Step 22. Replace the lower cover and bottom panel. Begin by placing the lower cover in position. Then replace the nine Phillips screws to secure the lower cover to the chassis. Be sure to replace the screws in the correct holes. Some holes are used to mount the bottom panel. Now place the shield plate in position. Replace the two Phillips screws that secure the shield plate to the lower cover. Next, replace the bottom panel by first placing it in position. Replace the seven screws. And finally, Carefully turn the printer over to its upright position. Step 23. Replace the cover set. Replace the cover set by holding the cover set over the printer and connecting the status panel cable. Then lower the cover set directly onto the printer and place it in position. Replace the five interior Phillips screws. And finally, replace the four exterior Phillips screws. Step 24. Replace the Laser Rider 2 IO PCA. Replace the I.O. PCA by sliding it into the base of the printer. Then replace the two Phillips screws that secure it to the chassis. Step 25. Replace the paper cassette and toner cartridge. Replace the paper cassette by sliding it into the printer until it stops. Next, place the toner cartridge in position and gently press down on it until it snaps into position. Step 26. Generate a test print. This is the last step whenever you service a LaserWriter 2 printer. Generate a test print to verify your work and to ensure the printer is working correctly. This concludes the base unit take-apart and final reassembly.
Please stop the tape now and complete the practice exercises in your Laser Writer Take Apart module. Thank you.